How's it going guys? Peshkats here and we're going to be taking a look at this week's card of the day reviews for Kizniver and uh, today I'm not alone. Yeah. I I brought an Australian with me. So <laughs> Go Imported. ahead. And... Fresh out of Sydney. All right, let's go. All right. So yeah, so with me today to uh, take a look at this week's cards is Philip McKay aka the the guy from great uh make marika great and uh he is someone that is actually going to play kisniver right i'm, I'm assuming definitely he's going to play kisniver. i've actually already started playing so okay and uh so we're gonna be taking a look at this week's cards so uh to start it off um we're gonna be taking a look uh first at the uh, 2-1 utah so uh he has an on play ability discard one to search your deck for a kizuna character and his other ability is a climax combo, uh, pay two and send himself to waiting room when you play the gold bar, and then you get to play three two Utah, which is the clock shooter, uh, from your waiting room. And uh, the clock shooter has the has a climax combo clock shoot with this the same gold bar climax. So uh, you're basically putting in a clock shooter at level two uh, for uh, three three stock and having the climax. So uh, any thoughts on this? Yeah, look, um, it's pretty trash. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's it's like it forces you into a particular a particular build, sure, but it, it doesn't really. Um, clock shoots at level two aren't exactly fantastic, and three stock um, to play something out of hand for that. Like I realized the well, it's played from waiting the, room. Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, it is from waiting room. Um, the does the does the Utah draw? No, the Utah doesn't draw you anything. So. Uh, the Utah is um, it's a cycle. It's well, yeah, twice it's per turn. Cycle. You play a bond, you can draw one, drop one. So it's not actually yeah. plussing you at all. Yeah, I don't feel like this is impactful enough to warrant running. And the other thing that I have an issue with is if you're running this as your advanced play, you're not running fried chicken. You're not running katsu, and I feel like that that's a mistake. <laughs> I feel like honestly, like uh. Green's probably not going to be played too much outside of yeah. like level zero. Uh, mm. I mean, like some people are probably going to play the the Honoka level one combo, but I think yeah. probably more people are going to be running the Tenga, which we will get to in yeah. a sec. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I think uh, to summarize my thoughts on this, um, so you can pretty much see my thoughts down there in the bottom right. So he gets a a free hand fix on play, but the uh, he costs one to be put onto the board in the first place, so it's not really free. Um, putting a clock shooter into play at level two is kind of... Yeah. It, it doesn't really do anything. Like, I could probably see the 3-2 clock shooter being played just as the 3-2, but I don't think the 2-1 is a card that we'll be seeing any play. Yep. And like it says at the bottom, if you don't have the gold bar, this card is a 2-1-4-5... Uh, drop one, search one, and then you have a two, one, four, five, which I think is yeah. just, uh, not 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 worth running. Curiously enough, this um this effect, the ditch one, search one, was actually first seen. Guess in what set? Um, on a two one or? No, just ever. Uh, what I don't know what set. Canon. Interesting. I I can't say I have ever looked at any cards in. Canon. I just know it has to do with like color and level or something like that. And spookiness. Yep. All right. Anyways, so onto the clock shooter itself. So uh, three abilities. Uh, the last one obviously being the uh, gold bar combo clock shoot. And uh, he get, has a buff ability. If you have two or more other Kizuna characters, he gets 1k. So pretty much he's always going to be a 11k base and then 12k with the gold bar. Mm. And up to twice per turn. When you play a character from your hand that has bond, oh, I forgot to remove this turn from the effect. Uh, oops. Uh, but yeah, you draw one and then you discard one. Uh, yep. Ignore the the this turn part. That's not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Yeah. So my thoughts on this. I mean, it's it's fine. Like quest. It's question mark fine. I mean, I don't really think the the loot is that good because you're playing bonds out of hand, and like obviously you want to play bonds anyway. But when you're when you're looking at a, a good clock shoot that has a, a CX combo, you want something that draws into the 
um, into the clock sheet. And the issue with this one, yes, it draws in. Like, it draws... You go deep as many cards as if you play, like, Akagi or something. But this you... is, This is also assuming you play two bonders, though. Exactly, yeah. So if you, if you aren't putting that investment in, then it's pretty... Ah, it's pretty hard. Like, I mean, I get it's a gold bus. It's easy to get. But, um... I don't know. Like, 12k before supports, like you say, is, like, pretty near... Yeah, Especially like you could, it can easily be, you can easily get above that with like having like a decent sized level three with like a support and like a, a counter. Yeah. It's, it's like very, very, very minimal effort. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I, I don't see it being um, good enough in what I think is the best build. Um, but I think it's possible that like you just, you have no that you have no other finisher, and you feel like you need a finisher, so you play this because it's more generic than all the other ones. What, in my opinion, is like one of the biggest problems with this card is so like his second ability it triggers when you play a bond, but yeah. okay, let's let's assume that you play this without the two one, like we were saying, right? Mm -mm. At that point, like like what are you even playing bonds for? Like at that point, you should probably just be playing. Like I don't know more copies more of this pushes. or or yeah. just other level threes that are actually going yeah. to impact your late game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like like I, at, I, 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 yeah, I, I feel like that's such a redundant effect. I think the only like situation that you would be playing a bond in is like if you are trying to get like perfect damage. At which yeah. point, like, at which point you probably don't even really need to dig for stuff with his effect. Well, if you're trying to get perfect damage and you have a clock kick, you don't need perfect damage because a clock kick is a perfect damage. Like it's one perfect yeah. damage. I mean, I mean, so... like if they if they like leave slots open or something, and then you're yeah, you're look, you're, I, you're going for perfect. I feel like the situation in which the second ability is good is so removed from reality that it's not even worth considering. Yeah. yeah. Like oh. it, like occasionally, occasionally you're gonna play a bonder and you're gonna like randomly top deck a gold bar, but. Like if you don't already have the gold bar in your hand, yeah, you then like then what are you doing? Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, you, you mentioned it turns your bonders into a draw one, ditch one, which is great, but not fantastic when you have a zero zero support that turns your bonders into a ditch one into, check top into four. Akatsuki. Yeah. 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 Um. So I think one thing worth quote unquote considering is that if you have the zero zero Yuta, when you play a bond. You're getting like you you milling like five cards deep or something, which is like super spooky. But um, and you also get fifteen hundred power, which is super spooky. And then you can like sack the bond and give it another twenty five hundred okay. power. Like yeah, you you can, you can definitely do that. But it's so like you, this actually kills your hand size. Like you have no hand after you play this. Full yeah, stop. this card doesn't actually get any advantage on its no. own. So yeah. All right, so okay. I think in the end, I think we can agree Average. that like the card, the card is like, it's like somebody's gonna, some people are gonna play it because it's a climax combo clock shoot. It's not a terrible yeah. card. At least he looks happy in his climax. Yeah, <laughs> a fat boy. It's all the gold bars and toothbrushing. Jeez. Uh, Nisi Monogatari things. Yeah, whatever that was. Oh boy, here we go. All right, so next up we have. One zero Tenga, and I actually mistranslated this for the first like thirty mm -hmm. seconds that it was yep. uh, on on foreign. Yep. And then I immediately fixed it, and it's actually mm -hmm. a pretty big difference. So, uh, so this is this Enormous. is the, the Tenga double R. Mm -hmm. um, for each of your other Kizuna characters, he gets a five hundred buff. So on a full board, he's going to be a six k uh, before yep. supports. And uh, climax combo with the wind. If he reverses the opponent, you look at up to two cards from the top of your deck, and you can choose up to two cards that are level one or higher from those two cards, uh, add them to your hand, and then send the rest of the yep. living room. So basically, if you reverse your opponent, you look at the top two cards of your deck, and you see two cards that are level one or higher, you just plus two for zero cost. So, yeah. So if you want, yeah. do you want the numbers on this? Um, you're probably better at that than I am, so go for it. <laughs> okay. So roughly when you hit, when you, at the time when you're going to be hitting this, considering that you are also running, um, the zero zero pay one cent memory check top four the early play condition for fried chicken and um the uh zero zero utah as well you're gonna be at a roughly 25 cards in deck of which um approximately um 70 of them will be level one or higher 
So your probability to hit two off one is 50%. Your probability to go to go plus four is 25%. That's insane. That's off two this off two tangers. I'm talking off two tangers. So it's pretty much like, so it's pretty much a coin flip. Well, no, your probability to go well, your probability to go plus one is like over 90%. Uh, put on, oh, sorry, your probability to go plus two, I should say, is over 90%, assuming you have two tangers. I'm just assuming you have two tangers here. Um, I feel like three is completely overkill, because um, you're actually more likely to go over hand size than not, which is super, super crazy, in my opinion. Um, like, this is this is one of those things where like, people looked at Maguro, and they were like, oh, Maguro, it's like, yeah, yeah Maguro. And um, Maguro is crazy. Like, Maguro is a crazy, crazy card. And people who haven't played Maguro don't understand how often you go above hand size with an effect like that. And this is Maguro on, like, straight roids in a deck that has so many bond effects. Like, as soon as you drop this card, and from having played it, I mean, I've played, like, 12 games now running this Tenga build. Any time that you get double Tenga and you get gas off it, like, if you go plus two or plus three... You just you win like you you can't lose from that point because you spent no resources you have an enormous amount of hand and you just you've gone so far into your deck like you refresh it like one two it's crazy it sounds like uh every cg deck ever yeah well yeah except you know why it's, it's better than cg you grab you grab two cards well, you grab you grab no their idle crash on it oh all right the <laughs> shots being fired on you okay so yeah uh something that we didn't specifically mention, but I mean, like, it's been sitting there on the screen for, like, a good two minutes, so... Yeah. Uh, but this card can grab events, because uh, if you read the text, it says, choose up to two cards that are level one or yeah. higher. And um, mm -hmm. this is especially relevant in this deck, because yeah. there's lots of very relevant events. Like, the heal counter event from two weeks ago is uh, yeah. definitely a very relevant card. There's a couple events coming up uh, that are yes. also very, very relevant. Uh, I think the mm. only thing that could have possibly made this card more stupid is if it had a bonder. Thankfully, it doesn't. Or so far, so far it doesn't. If this card gets yeah. a bonder, then we're actually in like stupid territory. Yeah. See, the the <laughs> issue that I'm I've had sometimes is like, which is the same issue that you have with other decks which rely on climax combos, I guess. Which is like, I need to draw my tangas, and you need to draw and I need climax. To draw, I need to draw my climax. Now, obviously, drawing into tangas as much as and drawing into climax is because you have you know seven thousand ways of digging through your deck. Um, and, and we also have we also have the event that's coming immediately after this. Yeah, exactly. You've got that as well. But um, yeah. If you if this and I think that's like the only thing that possibly keeps the Honoka still in the game. Like the it's Honoka is still in the game right now. But having that bond is going to help a lot. If this doesn't not having having a bond, then there's literally no reason to run Honoka because this is just crazy. Yeah. This if this gets a bond, like uh, hello. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Um. Was there anything else to note about? I think that was pretty much it for this card. Mm -hmm. um, Crazy. I feel like there was one more thing that I was going to say. I I'm sure I'll come up with it later if we just... Yeah. All right, anyways. Um, so next up we have the 1-1 one, one red event. Oh, I remember mm -hmm. what I was going to ask, actually. So uh, yeah. so in a deck where you're playing the 1-0 Tenga, assuming mm -hmm. like your your hand fills up so much, like what do you yeah. what do you pick for second climax? Do you still pick a, uh, like a gate or a pants because those are both those are both in my opinion relevant climax combos that can be run yeah so right now i'm running tenga and fried chicken so um, so four wind four gate yeah and then like bodyguard for bodyguard plus heal bodyguard, top chidori. yeah seems, bodyguard chidori end game. So yeah it seems pretty simple and basically just walling off with the three one event and the the other counter event that's coming up all right okay so um Next, we have the 1-1 one, one event. So, salvage mm. a Kizuna character, and then you can choose uh, choose one of your opponent's cost one or lower characters in the front row, and just kill it. Yeah. So, you like, other other sets have, like, a 1-1 one, one event that salvages a character and gives, like, 1k power. And this is mm -hmm. salvage a character and then just straight up kill something, which I yeah. think is ridiculous. There, there's not even, like, a... A restriction on like like you need like two or more kizuna characters to play this mm. event which i think is absurd yeah well i think i think it's a crazy event but it's very it's a weird nonbo because you want to be reversing with tenga and you're probably also running the one zero bomb 
So, I mean, I, I realistically, while this is like such a crazy event, I don't know if it actually has a place because you want your opponent to have stuff on boards that you can have value. Unless, of course, you want to like kill something in front row and then put a bomb in front of it for that open slot and force them to have to swing into a bomb. I, I, I just... Think I think this would yeah. be okay as like as like a one of because like you said like ideal situation is you play two tangas so if your opponent fills their front mm -hmm. row you use this to pop yeah. one and then you use tanga to kill the other two. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. And I think tanga tanga doesn't have any problems reversing things because like you got a fifteen hundred buff from your Utah, you got a fifteen hundred buff from the, the the fried chicken condition. It's really easy to um, to get him up. So I think that's yeah. It's it's a weird. I haven't tried it yet, I'll be honest, but um, I'll play around with like one or two copies and we'll see how it goes. Um, it is really good value though, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I think I think one of is one of this is like a, a good number. It can grab your Tanga if you if you like bend it off of your uh, Utah effect or something like that. So yeah, I think, and I think it, the other I, thing nice as well with this is because um, because Naiva doesn't have as of yet a way of digging during main phase into your um, waiting room. Um, other than Bond, right. and if there are like Bond cards that you don't, um, like net, for example, like the two one stock bomb that bonds to the three two Tenga. So that's a, essentially you pay two one for the Bond, you pay one for the um, for the Bond ability. So you're you're paying two. You may want to just pay this and salvage it instead. Something like that is the only other consideration. Yeah, this is like this is the only thing that that can actually so far that can actually get anything out. Of, no, yeah. wait, no, this and the zero zero TD. Chidori. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are, yeah. Those are the only two things that can grab anything from Waiting Room so far yep. in this entire set. So I think this is yep. definitely a card to look at. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, the oh, Bound by Wounds 3 2 counter. Uh, all of your mm -hmm. opponent's characters get minus one soul this turn. Um, yeah. As you can see, this card does not target. That's very relevant. Yeah. So This um, is crazy. I you you probably tested with this because I mean like you've been like proxying or something with this right with yeah. the set. Uh, yeah. I I can't really make an evaluation of the card through like experience. So if you have any thoughts on this, uh, yours your opinion would probably be better than mine. Yeah. So the way I look at this is the th the threat of having this is so much bigger than actually playing it because the issue with the heal counter is that it, it only you can only proc the heal when it comes to um, level twos and above. So generally that means they're swinging, um, you know, with a two-soul character, right? So if you brought them down to one soul, it wouldn't be as effective. But then you get smart people who decide, oh, I'm going to play, um, you know, just like one zeros or something and just swing for one, one, one or something like that and try and get under your tangers. And suddenly um, you shut down your, their entire field. You shut down their whole board. And I think the other thing as well worth considering is um, pay, you can pay four stock to minus two soul their whole board. It's two cards from hand and four stock. You can minus two soul their whole board, um, except for their first attack. And I think that's sort of... Sometimes that's. I think that might be relevant. I've never gotten into a situation where it can be relevant. The only issue I have is that the deck is very stock heavy sometimes at level three. So 3-2 um, sometimes is just not vi a viable cost that you can pay, especially because this doesn't get power. And Tenga can actually sometimes be kind of fragile. But um, it's a really crazy card to just have in your hand and your opponent is forced to like they either they play badly by playing into this or they play even worse by playing into the heal counter and having those two options is just like insane i've, I've never actually like played i know you've got their combo with body card and heal counter and minus one soul but uh, like, yeah uh, that's that's like that's like the stupid dream <laughs> That's it's like sick, I, juicy me. I, I just but... I just put that as like filler since I I really didn't have much I could say. But um, yeah. now that you bring up like should have probably mentioned that it doesn't target because that's an important part of the card. Yeah, I probably should have put that here. Um, um, but I I think you you brought up a good point. Like having having both this and the heal counter in your hand with like three two tanga. Like your opponent basically has no winning option. Put it this way: at this point. I've gone 7-0 against, like, Meta to Love Root. Like, I know, 7-0 seven, seven playing the exact same list against Meta to Love Root because they full stop cannot kill it. Like, they, nothing they can do actually gets through. And, and then you just heal up. Well, yeah, that's it. Like, you know, they go into their Yami turn and you heal three times. Then you play double Chidori and you heal two more times. And then you're back at 3-0 again. You swing a couple of times. You have a 3-2 uh, minus one soul counter. The next turn they swing for... 3-3-3, three, 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 you bring it down to 2-2-2, two, 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 they can't kill you anyway. 
you just get so many turns at level three. It's um, it's super super obnoxious. Like the the wall on this deck is insane. But yeah, I mean that's that's why I've been like pushing the the the, the yellow the yellow red build is really what I'm I've been working on without the the Nico, just because you stay alive for so long and you just outvalue your opponent so much. Like there's so much value in in some of these cards. So uh, with that being said, I I feel like the counter to like assuming that. Let, let's let's assume like that becomes like the best build because honestly it sounds it sounds pretty good, um, mm. but uh, would it be fair to say that like the deck just um, loses to like high burst burn abilities then? Um, no, not at all because the deck compresses pretty well. Um, so like Sinon, I think you're like Sinon is the quintessential example of like high burst burn. Yeah, and Sinon can't kill you even without all these counters. When you add the counters in, like it's just impossible for them to. I honestly, this this deck is so unique right now. I'm I'm not actually sure Bushy was like fully sober when they put <laughs> some of these combinations of cards together because this is this is 2012 2013 Weiss, except it's actually hard. It's actually hard to play. <laughs> so um, maybe the counter is is burst, but the number one counter to this whole deck, the number one counter to Tenga, um, is a uh, wind triggers. Right, because you just lose. Yeah. Uh, yummy. Hello. Yep, that's it. Yeah. All right. Um. So moving on to the next card, then we have next up. We have today's previews. Uh, there were two holidays this week, so only three days worth of previews. Uh, so yep. this is the Hisomu zero zero. Uh, continuously, mm -hmm. he gives your other Kizuna character in front row center slot plus fifteen hundred power. <coughs> Bodyguard. Um. Yeah. And uh, on play, he has a typical top check filter effect. If it's a Kizuna character, you add it to your hand and then discard a card. Uh, this is crazy. It's this it's is... pretty. This card's pretty great. It's another fifteen hundred buff for your Tanga at level one. It's a fifteen hundred buff for your bodyguard at level three. And uh, at any point, he's just a hand fix. So he's going to be putting in work at every single stage of the game. Yeah, I think you run this at four, and if you don't run it at four, you're wrong. Um, like it's it's stupid, stupid good, especially because if you're running that bodyguard endgame, um, level supports are completely pointless because because like, you, you, you only need four. you only need it in one slot. Exactly, and having like a hand fix as well. Hand fix is really really important in this deck. Um, I mean, you know, the whole the whole set is hand fixing. So having even more hand fixing is just like you know. It's this big, you know, white, magical wise Christmas land. That's what this set is. It's magical wise Christmas land. You've got a center slot character that swings in at like 9k power or something at, at 1 0 with just on field effects. Um, yeah, there's there's really nothing bad about this. I mean, yeah, and it even color fixes for blue if blue is even a color that you run. It's it's such a, a crazy zero. It's what the it's what the set needed. This is like I think this is like another another card that like every single Kiznaiver deck is probably gonna be running just because yeah, it's, it's, it's good yeah this is a double r okay 2980 um... holy <laughs> that's a big number okay to be honest personally i'm guessing oh shit what's the last double r hand fix we've had yotsugi uh from monogatari all right i'm i'm, I'm gonna cool. guess i'm gonna guess 1500 starting price that, that's yeah. that's my guess. Wouldn't be surprised. And I mean, one of the well, the only thing to consider with this card is that you might actually run um, the two one TD level support over this. Um, but what I'll, else does we'll she talk do? about she, that. She discard bonds to the healer, right? Yes, but the key difference is this is not a bond, and right. probably your your late game is going to be Utah plus blank slot, and probably the only key difference is you might want that on play like when you play the two run level support that you can actually get the um proc your abilities and stuff yeah so that's the only thing we, that might pop up but i think otherwise we're pretty much covered it's a, it's a really yeah. strong card uh i will also note one thing that i i didn't put in here but the more events you run the more you're going to miss this card so uh yep. you do need to balance that out a bit the more events you run the more you're going to miss this card the more you're going to hit your tango yeah <laughs> okay um Next up, we have today's 3-2 Hisomu, which, in my opinion, is a much 
less uh, amazing card than the yep. previous one. So this is a 3-2 early drop, 10k. Uh, you can early drop him if you have the previous Hisomu in your clock. Uh, why is he in your clock? Uh, I don't know. Maybe he... he I, I feel like the only reason that he should be in your clock is if you ate him as damage. Yep. And then um, on play, you draw one and he gets 2k. So uh, my thoughts on the screen. Uh, 2k buff, he st still can't kill a lot of early drops. And then he loses, He drops the 2k off at the end of the turn, so he's going to die pretty easily. And uh, because he only draws one card, he can't even really reliably set you up for any sort of end game combo. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, in Puyo Puyo, um, we have... Amity, where the zero zero is pretty mediocre, and then the early play is fantastic. Like that that and level zero, like... that level zero Amity, like you you want to clock that at level yeah. two because that card's not doing yeah. anything anymore. And at the same time, it's also a check top X, which is far far better than a two K draw one at on, yeah. on an early drop or just even in yep. general. I think. Mm -hmm, definitely. And then um, this is like you know the only thing I would add to this is that he kind of he kind of looks like. That guy from the album cover of the Gorillas. I don't even yes. know if anyone. Uh, yeah, I, I see what you're talking about. Okay, yeah. But, it's the it's, yeah, the, it's otherwise... the mouth. It's the mouth. Yeah, it's the mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> otherwise, I think this is super unplayable, and the only reason you'd run this is because you're running mono blue. Yeah. Um, and even then, you'd still just play the Gomorin thing. I I think it's a good thing that this is an uncommon because this card is not very good. Yeah. Pretty jank. All right, and then. Last card. Um, the last line says it all. So this is the 0-0 zero, zero Katsuhira. Um, another uncommon. Thankfully not taking up higher rarity slots. Uh, he has the, the dreaded double downside, which if you guys watch my videos, you guys know by now I hate double downside on just about anything. Uh, so he can't side, and on play, you reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's not a Kuzna character, send it to clock. So... Um, Remember how we said if you top check uh, an event with the Hisomu, you you don't get to add it to your hand and discard a card. Well, this one, if you play it and you top check an event, you just like straight up hit yourself. Yep, I think I would rather run the um the trial deck. Trial deck can't, can't side Honoka. Yep, instead of this, I think the only thing is that like it is four K, and I don't know if you really care when you're at zero if you send an event to your clock but i mean the list that i'm running right now has six events or something in it and plus the the climaxes you know you have a decent chance of hitting this and is it really worth it for a 4k at level zero whenever every major set runs bombs except for does, does tp run bombs uh yeah you yeah uh, tp decks typically run the red bombs Right, yeah. So you, every every major set has bombs. So 4K is not as relevant now as it was in 2011. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's probably not even worth decking um, unless you need red fixing, which you shouldn't. I, I think just based on what we've already seen for zeros, like there's there's not even too much room for like beaters in general, let alone one that's as bad as this. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that at least it's got nice art. Well, there, there, there's plenty of cards in this set that have that have nice art. So, I got men on them. Okay. Good. All right. So that pretty much sums up our card of the day reviews for this week. And uh, look out for our TD review, which we're going to be recording right after this, and I'll be posting after this video. So uh, keep a lookout for that. And until next time, this has been Peshkats here with the Philip McKay. Stay tuned. What he said. Yeah. <laughs>